So I have been wondering what kind of model should I build next and then I got an idea. Why not to build a Sukhoi which flew on India's 50th Republic Day. It is made in the wonderful tricolor scheme and I was excited to see and build it. So here as you can see. Yep. So looking closely, this is SB006. Yes. It's a wonderful scheme. There is a die cast model of it. Click of the hand and the model is ready. I am happy with how it has turned out to be. It looks beautiful. The one I made is the SB008. So I am going to build it from a trumpeter kit of the Russian Sukhoi 30 MKK flanker. These were the original flankers that were delivered to the Indian Air Force which did not have canard wings. Let's open the kit and see what it contains. So here is the instruction sheet. It shows the missile hard points. This is the first trumpeter kit that I am building and I am very much impressed with the quality of the kit and the quality of the packing as well. The plastic is a bit hard. It has recessed panel lines and quite good amount of detail for 70 second scale. A better kit than Zvezda, I guess. These are the landing gear screws. The cockpit instrument dials are just flat panels. This is the cockpit tub and the speed brake or the air brake. These are the vertical stabilizers. And a thing about trumpeter kits is they have a mold line which runs exactly in the center of the canopy. So that's what we got in the kit. Let's begin. Okay, so this is the uh, behemoth decal sheet that I ordered from eBay. Uh, it has the decals for the tricolor scheme. It has got the Indian Air Force roundels as well as the Ashok Chakra. As you can see the Ashok Chakra is a huge decal, a single piece decal and it was challenging to put it on.
Let's begin the build. Attaching the vertical stabilizer. Using the ever faithful Tamiya Extra Thin Glue. Attaching a bits and bobs of small antennas. I should be more technically correct, those are the pitot and the static tubes, not the antennas as such. Correct me if I am wrong in the comments, please. There it is. Well, the cockpit tub looks pretty simple and I will just attach the control column stick onto that. They got good enough detail. Priming the ejection sheet in black color. Putting a bit of olive drab color onto the seat and here it is. The seat belts are already, already etched into the sheet. Painting it in black color. The control sticks have been painted black as well. Trumpeter has provided cockpit instrument decals that go well over the cockpit tub. The quality of the decals is top notch. As you can see, it gives a completely different dimension to the small cockpit tub. These are the instrument dial panels. They got a uh, decals that go on to them as well. Looks perfect. Checking a test fit. I am fixing the ejection seat into the cockpit tub. Placing the instrument dial. Looks perfect. And doing a test fit to see. There are no mismatches. Everything is aligned correctly. Look good to me. Fix the second dial as well. And now placing the uh, cockpit assembly onto the fuselage. There is a notch on the left side and in it goes. Perfect. I absolutely love the fit of this trumpeter kit. I 
and that's how it is looking excellent i'm very much satisfied it with how it has turned out to be all the details are perfectly visible i didn't add too much detail and he is using a clear blue to paint the uh, i guess that the heads of display panel that goes in front of the captain seat okay there it is in place now i am trying to remove the mold line well it didn't turn out as good as i wanted it to be i watched a few videos to get an idea of how to do it but it didn't work out the way i needed you see those scratches i tried doing the sanding i should have used a higher grit of sandpaper So I masked the canopy using Tamiya tape. I will assemble them using water-based glue. Always avoid using Tamiya extra thin cement or Fabricrete to fix the uh, canopy glass because those glues they give out fumes and that will fog up the glass. So always remember to use water based glue for fixing the canopy glass. So it's in place. These are the air intake again a perfect fit for this trumpeter kit. and the air intake are ready drilling some holes in the lower part of the wing on which the missile guide rails will be attached I'm assembling the top half and the bottom half of the fuselage. See how well they go in place with no seams, no open gap, a perfect fit. Tighten them up with clamps to hold them in place together, and then started applying some extra thin glue. in all the required places here is mounting the nose cone as always i put weights into that i 
I cover the wheel well with piece of tissue paper and water and once it dries up it serves as a perfect masking. Now I will begin with priming the exhaust using the Mr. Surfacer 1500 black color. It is useful to have a base color of black whenever we are painting something metallic on to top of it. So I am spraying some ammo silver onto this to get that metallic shine. So this is the base coat. And th this is a self made mix of purplish blackish color that I tried my best to get it. This, this is how a metal looks when it is, uh, uh, you know, uh, oxidization happens, I guess that, that's the correct term. That, that's the part of the uh, turbine where most of the heating will occur and that is where the metal will become oxidized. Putting a light layer of natto black on top of it to blend in with the surface of the uh, metal I have masked the areas which will uh, remain metallic and then spread the colors over them. Painting the exhaust nozzles. They have already been painted in a shine, shiny metallic color. And then I just added a bit of black color to the same metallic color to mimic the different shade fixing the exhaust nozzle And then putting masking everything, especially the exhaust side, and then spraying Camlin white acrylic color over the complete aircraft. That's like the base coat for the saffron and the uh, green color, as well as the mid and white color. Using the reference photos, carefully masking the surfaces. And this is how it looks after the complete masking is done and ready to paint the saffron color and the green color.
can I use the camel orange color and the camel sap green acrylic colors? Two airbrush. And now I'm painting the orange or the saffron color on the front portion of the fuselage. It looks good and it has turned out to be of a perfect shade. That's how it looks after it is dried. It comes down to a bit of satin finish. And now I am spraying the sad green color on the rear portion of the fuselage. I thin them with Colin Cleaner and they go on pretty well. Now removing the masking. It is always fun to remove the masking. But remember we need to do it very slowly. Otherwise there is a risk of paint coming off and it is not so easy to again get that paint into that area exactly like how it was before. I'm pretty happy with how the exhaust has turned out to be. And now removing the masking for the nose cone. That's a big ball of masking there. Looking good. Now fixing the missile rail below the air intake and on the bottom of the fuselage. This is a wonderful tool, the circle cutter by DSEIA, it's a Chinese company. I have been using it for over 3 or 4 years to cut circles, them to mask on the landing gear wheel. There is a sharp cutter that we get with this. You put the cutter onto that hole, adjust it with that nut. Make a diameter of the wheel and then using the same thing as a reference, transfer the dimensions from the scale onto the scale of the circle cutter. Adjust the depth of the cutting pin and just rotate it. You will get a perfect centerless circle. And these are how perfect they turn out to be. See? They are perfect. I covered the faces of the wheel with the masking. Small you can go as well. I 
and now I will be painting them using the XF85 rubber black. Air brushing two thin layers of the rubber black color. I will remove the masking. Perfect. They look beautiful, isn't it? I will paint the landing gears strut assembly with the sky grey color. And now it's time for the most challenging part of this build. Getting that big Ashok Chakra in place without tearing it, of course. This is the part of the build that excited me the most and that made me anxious as well. I had ideas of maybe cutting it into two halves, putting it, or cutting it into three parts, like uh, 120 degree uh, cut and then putting those three parts one by one aligning them but then I decided it's better to see if I would be able to have it go on, on the aircraft in a single piece without tearing it up you can see how thin it is and it's, it's a challenge to handle it once it is removed from the decal paper while removing if it gets stuck to one another well you are in for some quite amount of surgery that curve and the bump which is present on the fuselage that was challenging and because of that it, it could not you know fall into the proper place it could not embrace the curve if I should say and I had to just wait patiently slowly work trying my best to remove the air which was trapped beneath it also if you could observe closely it's not exactly in the center I tried my best to move it to the center but yeah that's what happened so I just thought okay let it be where it is and then I wiped off the extra water after a thin light coat of decal solution it was well in place And then I went on applying the Indian Air Force rounders and rest of the decals as well. This time I thought of trying a new approach to use chrome sticker for the landing gear strut. I cut it to the side and then tried matching it perfect I 
I learned this technique watching some of the automobile scale modelers on YouTube and it worked wonderfully. Just you have to be patient till the end of this chrome sticker they stick together pretty well and that's how it looks. Yay for the bit of realism. And try to add some more realism to indicate the pipeline that carry hydraulic fluid to the landing gear. And now we are on to the landing gear door. So I guess this is a accumulator that's on the nose landing gear, did a bit of dry brushing. And adding wash for that added depth and realism. These washes really accentuate the uh, shadows and they go and flow into the crevices. That gives a added depth. Looks good. I'm happy. Using a chrome marker, I painted the light onto the nose landing gear. Removed the masking that I had put into the landing gear base. And then fixing the nose landing gear in the place. With some Tamiya extra thin cement. Now fixing the main landing gear. And I am done with assembling the landing gear. It's now time for the landing gear door. These are the landing gear doors with small decal. I use Fabiquick gel the thicker version so that uh, there is enough time for me to move the door properly in place and then once it is fixed in place and it has dried I apply a thin coat of Tami extra thin cement as well so that the plastic melts and the door stay in the place. I was wondering if there are any rods that hold the door in place. The instruction sheet was unclear and I did not find any actuator rods which usually hold the landing gear door in place. If there are any experts, if you know, there has to be a rod which I have seen in some of the reference photos. Please let me know in the comments. 
well they look good but not realistic because kind of they should not just be floating on the hinge but hey that's our little secret now fixing the r27 missile I personally don't like to load my aircraft with all the missiles. Put in the pitot tube in place. And now it's time for the final matte coat. Using the Rebel matte coat. I thin it with water. and then airbrush two thin coat over the complete aircraft and it gives a very nice matte finish to the aircraft and seals off all the effects and the colors and the details in place now removing the masking from the canopy and we can see how wonderful it looks after all the masking is removed i am happy with how it has turned out to be if you like the content that i create and if you enjoy my videos i kindly request you to like share and subscribe to my channel i have 99% of my viewers who are not subscribed to the channel so please subscribe it is free and it motivates me to create great content thank you so much signing out indian scale modeler rahul kulkarni